Hello, everyone. Um, I'm uh, JRF here at Teddy Hall, um, and about the only person that's ever worked in archaeology at Teddy Hall in all the years that it's existed. Um, I mostly, well, almost exclusively work in radiocarbon dating uh, and the mathematical modeling of radiocarbon dates. So I'm not really a proper archaeologist, <coughs> but <coughs> my focus has been working on the chronology of <coughs> Egypt and the, uh, its neighboring countries, uh, Southwest Asia and a little bit in the Aegean as well. So here we have the um, chronology of Egypt all the way through immensely long periods of time. <clears throat> this is what we call the early dynastic period and the old kingdom. And this is re really can be considered one continuous state. The project that I worked on before this one was on how uh, Egypt was for, um, formed in the first place, uh, how the different communities in Northeast Africa came together and the timing of that. Now this can be considered one continuous state. Then you have a gap <clears throat> before the Middle Kingdom, another gap before the New Kingdom, and a third here. And these are called intermediate periods. And basically what they are is when the state essentially uh, breaks down uh, and provincial elites rise to the fore, <clears throat> and you don't have a centralized government. You don't have Egypt anymore during those periods. So what I'm going to talk about today is this first uh, collapse of the Egyptian state here at the end of the Old Kingdom. And this is the period, of course, when they built the pyramids and so on. <clears throat> this is the earliest period, really, of Egyptian history, which goes all the way through the more famous monuments of uh, the New Kingdom and later on through the Greco-Roman period and so on. So here we are in the Old Kingdom. This is the Great Pyramid. Um, and just to sort of emphasize uh, the sort of antiquity of this civilization, I, I like to uh, uh, recount the um, point that the Great Pyramid was the tallest man-made structure on Earth for 46 centuries. And when one thinks of the Chrysler Building and the um, uh, Empire State Building and these sorts of things being the tallest buildings in the world for 20 and 30 years, 4,600 years, the Great Pyramid was the tallest building on Earth. <clears throat> and dates to around the middle third millennium B BC, at the height of the Old Kingdom. Now, um, Egypt is in the middle of a desert, as everyone knows, and it lives on the water of the Nile that comes down from the Ethiopian highlands over here. And it wouldn't exist at all <clears throat> if it weren't for this annual flood that came down through antiquity every year, um, irrigating and uh, nurturing all the crops that the, Egyptians, uh, uh, the Egyptian state lived on. Here we are, just a sort of gratuitous shot of the Nile next to something that's not really even related to this talk. This is much later, the Temple of Philae, but uh, the idea is that <clears throat> The Nile is the lifeblood of Egyptian civilization. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> at what this project that I'm working on now, and in fact, unfortunately, this is a story kind of that doesn't have a proper conclusion because the, the, I haven't quite finished this research project, but I'll tell you how far I've got so far. And what it is, is looking at the end of the Old Kingdom and the cause of this break in civilization. Uh, there are two sort of schools of thought about it. One is that <clears throat> it had nothing to do with the climate. As I was trying to say, the, the, the Egyptians depended um, existentially on the River, river Nile. It didn't have to necessarily fail. We, nobody's ever suggesting that the, the river didn't flow in the Holocene uh, in this geological period. But <clears throat> what might have happened is that the floods were too low to irrigate enough of the fields to produce enough uh, food for people, so then there would have been famines and riots and, and carry on. So <clears throat> what's interesting to note is that for a long time there, have, there has been uh, talk of there being a mega drought at about this time uh, in uh, this part of the world, certainly in Southwest Asia and in Southeast Europe as well. So what I want to do is look at whether or not that climatic event, if, it, if we can find it in the Egyptian record, and whether or not it may have actually help, helped to lead to the downfall of the Egyptian state. There is another school that says it had nothing to do with the climate. It was just about the way the king managed the estates at the time, uh, <clears throat> particularly during the reign of the king Pepi II, who can be thought of as the last great king of the old kingdom. And he 
during his time, the bureaucracy of the state grew, and he didn't really essentially manage the royal estates very well. He uh, gave up too much power to the provinces, and they grew and began to hand down their own uh, titles to their um, sons and so on. So essentially, uh, power was devolved slowly but surely from the capital, from Memphis, modern-day Cairo, to, to, to the provinces. And that might have caused the breakdown of the civilization, so climate need not have been a factor. And there is some <clears throat> uh, circumstantial evidence from the uh, time period uh, of uh, documentation of famines and drought and so on. This is a, a tomb uh, inscription. But we can't necessarily trust these uh, in their entirety uh, because it might have just been the ruler or the person to whom the uh, grave, grave is dedicated bigging up their own sort of contribution to their community. <clears throat> I saved them from dying of hunger and so on. So the object of my current work is to date the accession of Pepe, the be beginning of his reign, Pepe II, date the environmental event and essentially see whether there's a relationship between the two. Clearly, if climate uh, played a role in the downfall of the old kingdom, then the environmental event had to precede his reign, so then it had some knock-on effects. If it post-dated his reign, we know that it's more likely it had very little to do with the fall of the old kingdom. So, as I say, there is something at this time period, which is called the 4.2 Ka, essentially 4,200 years ago, climatic event, um, that is recorded as a drought, particularly up here in Mesopotamia and so on. <clears throat> and what those scholars believe the cause of it was, uh, um, was a um, failing of the Indian Ocean monsoon at that time period, which was responsible for the f flood in the Nile, because basically the rain came in uh, off the Indian Ocean, hit the Ethiopian highlands, and uh, that's where all the, most of the flood water came uh, that provided all the um, irrigation for the crops in Egypt. So if the Indian Ocean monsoon did indeed fail around about this time, Egypt also would be affected by that. But it's a complex picture because the, the, um, the flood waters uh, of the Nile also are partly influ influenced by the movement of the Congo air boundary and Med Mediterranean westerlies and so on. So it's not as clear as it might be. But what I'm trying to do <clears throat> is date, radiocarbon date, both the political um, conclusion of the Old Kingdom and I can use the same method, radiocarbon dating, to date sediments up in the lakes of the Blue Nile catchment to see <clears throat> where the geomorphologists have told me there's a, evidence of a drought, see if I can pin that down, date that to you know, the exact year, ah, well, as best I can, <clears throat> and then, as I say, offset that against um, uh, the political situation, or the political chronology. So this is uh, my schematic of how it works. <clears throat> the mistake, I think, that people have made in the past when they've been trying to find this uh, uh, event in Egypt is they've had sedimentary cores down into the um, delta and they've found evidence of droughts and so on but when they've tried to date them <clears throat> well the, the sediments really quite hard to date and they get a lot of reversals in the datings and so on clearly the stuff at the bottom should be the oldest the stuff near the top should be the youngest but <clears throat> it isn't that clear and I, this is what my uh, reasoning for it is is that the rain comes every year uh, off the Indian Ocean into the Ethiopian highlands and it washes down the sediment year after year. And this builds up in Egypt over time. <clears throat> so actually what you've got here is not only sometimes sediment that's been carried a long way, organic material that's decayed away, but now it's quite old by the time it gets to Egypt. You're also getting cutting along the Nile Channel, dredging up old dirt and so on. So if you're looking for a, a, a climatic event in the sediments of Egypt, this is, I think, the wrong place to look. The best thing is to look right up at the source, and this is what we've done. We've got a couple of lakes in the Blue Nile catchment, and we've got um, cores from beneath the lakes, and we're dating them. Because clearly the water came down within a few months from, and so if the rain lightened up and the <clears throat> Nile flow essentially receded quite a lot, then that evidence should be uh, clear from up at the Nile lakes, up at the uh, Blue Nile catchment. So at the moment I actually haven't got the final results, unfortunately. Um, what I can do, this is kind of depth on the scale and this is time on the scale. So as well as measuring the archaeological artifacts which will give me the dates for the end of the Old Kingdom, I can measure these sediments down through the lake and I can build profiles <coughs> and work out this sort of thing. This is, some of these dates are actually just simulated dates from the, uh, from the um, computer program at the moment. But what I can do is end up 
with an estimate of where in time uh, this environmental event took place. And what I can say already is that in the two lakes we're look at, look, looking at in the catchment, we do see around about this time uh, evidence for low lake levels for something of a drought. So that sort of supports this idea. And I have got some pr preliminary results, but it's at the moment not yet quite so finely resolved as this. I need to do some more measurements so I can get it to about this level, which is perhaps two or, hundred, two or three hundred year sort of accuracy, uh, precision. And then I'll get a similar, probably slightly better um, precision on when Pepe was in uh, power. And then, as I say, the idea will be to compare the two. It doesn't necessarily mean in the end, even if there was a massive drought just before Pepe took power, that that even had anything to do with, his, uh, with the downfall of the state. But the opposite would, I think, be true. If the, if the drought post-dated Pepe, then clearly had very little to do with the, with the collapse of the state. And that's what I'm working on now, and hopefully within six months or so, I should have my final results. Thank you very much.